Okay, our next, uh, what's everybody filing? Our next presentation is a contribution from Kyoto University in Japan. The uh, co-authors are Mitsudo, Ishihara, and Watanabe, and Professor Watanabe is going to uh, present the paper which is entitled Fischer-Trope Synthesis Using a Triethyl Ammonium Iron Carbonyl Complex Alkali Metal Hydroxide Supported Catalyst. Synthesis using novel catalytic system of nucleate for catalyst and support. I mean the novel uh, nucleate triacyl ammonium trinuclear chelate solvent. We use this compound for the first time for the physical synthesis. And in this work, a co catalyst, this chelate is fixed, and co catalyst and support are changed. Uh, uh, for example, co catalyst, uh, as co catalyst, alkaline metal hydroxide, alkaline earth metal hydroxide, and lanthanide, and transient metal complexes are used. And as a support, zeolite, alumina, Okay. And, and silica and GS5 are used as support. I'd like to talk, <coughs> I've mentioned uh, a little about the background of, uh, of this study. Barnes and Bassett reported that 1980 iron carbonyl supported catalyst for physical synthesis. Barnes reported by sodium carbonyl on gamma alumina. And Bassett reported the result using iron tricarbonyl, silica carbonyl on gamma alumina. But they reported that this catalyst is exhibited low conversion. non <coughs> conversion is up around 3%. And five years later, we did some work on tricarbonyl, black carbonyl, and three equivalent <coughs> potassium hydroxide on zeolite. This catalyst shows high conversion uh, <coughs> at around 50%. This is shows some uh, details of the result of Bassett et al. and Donald et al. And <coughs> conversion is 3.3% and Barnice the result is 2.3%. So <coughs> this system is not so good for physiotropic synthesis. <coughs> we did some work on this system. Dolica carbonyl and three equivalent metal potassium hydroxide. And this system, this <coughs> phthalate is formed and carbon di potassium carbon dioxide and on HY zeolite 
and this system is very good for isotope synthesis. So conversion 58%. Effective conversion means uh, converted to hydrocarbon 26%. <coughs> This it shows some preparation, method of preparation catalyst. And this pellet is <coughs> treated with uh, alkaline, alkaline metal hydroxide in methanol at room temperature for three hours. And then support is added to this mixture and continued uh, stir for two hours. And solvent is evacuated and then I am 10 weight percent and this catalyst is activated under these conditions. And the actual conditions we use X bed flow reactor and 40 atom CO hydrogen ratio 1.0 300 centigrade. <coughs> Shows some result on actually zeolite and potassium hydroxide. <coughs> and this column shows effective conversion or the total conversion. Effective conversion of carbon monoxide to hydrocarbons. <coughs> total conversion of carbon monoxide, and then we get carbon monoxide is converted into two compound, hydrocarbon and carbon dioxide. So without potassium, activity is low. Uh, uh, total conversion around, and effective conversion around <coughs> six or seven. And then potassium hydroxide is added. And then conversion increased sharply. And around here, total conversion is uh, amounted to 75% and effective conversion 32. This is maximum. And more amount of hydrox potassium hydroxide is added, and then uh, uh, conversion is decreased to 61 or 40. And this black color one shows some working portions at <coughs> C3 fraction and propane increased <coughs> around here and finally nine nine percent propane is obtained. So selectivity is open selectivity is changed with potassium, the amount of added potassium hydroxide. <coughs> so potassium <coughs> hydroxide <coughs> more ratio potassium by Iron, so maximum effective conversion around here, 1.7. And cesium oxide, hydroxide, is also effective for this reaction. But cesium hydroxide has maximum around 2.2 around here. And sodium, it also has a maximum effective conversion around here. But lithium hydroxide, is, has no maximum. So among this alkali metal hydroxide, potassium is best. <coughs> mm. 
this is show some result on <coughs> gamma alumina. So when gamma alumina is su used as support, then <coughs> gamma alumina is also <coughs> or can be used as support. Effective conversion uh, without potassium hydroxide. This system shows some <coughs> Effective for the physiotropic synthesis, so around 50% conversion is achieved. And then, <coughs> potassium ion ratio around 0 0.3, then total conversion amount to around 90%, and effective conversion around 40%. And this is maximum. And more amount of potassium hydroxide is added, then conversion, cell conversion decreases to Alumina. This slope is gamma alumina. <laughs> and then this one is a zeolite. And this one is sodium white zeolite. As you can see, so when gamma alumina is used as support, then sharp. Maximum is observed, <coughs> and <coughs> bar nice result we pointed out here. Potassium ion ratio two point zero, and we this result also. I carbonium three equivalent potassium dioxide on alumina, gum alumina. Point here. The conversion is low, <coughs> but <coughs> when gum alumina is used on support, potassium and iron ratio is very effective. And now in the narrow range, but <coughs> uh, is uh, can be used can be used. A more broad range for this piece of synthesis. <coughs> this is shows some result with gamma alumina. And potassium has some maximum around <coughs> here, 0 0.3. <coughs> Molar ratio and cesium hydroxide also has maximum down here. And uh, magnesium hydroxide down here. And sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide like this. And sodium hydroxide that maximum has around 0 0.5. <coughs> Upper metal hydroxide affects the uh, selectivity of polyphenols. And th this is C2 fraction, acetylene proportion this one is C3, C3 proportion, propion. Propion 
is <coughs> obtained in 70 to 9% areas. But this then is certainly highly affected by the moral ratio. And cesium, potassium, rubidium, in this case, sharply increase. C2 acylene selectivity sharply increase to finally 90%. And this, this same hydroxide does not affect on the C2 acylene selectivity. Sodium hydroxide has a weak effect on C2 or SN selectivities. This shows some <coughs> results on DSM-5 and silica alumina ratio 50 and then <coughs> result is like this, and potassium uh, and iron ratio around 0.3, it shows the maximum. But uh, <coughs> uh, silica alumina ratio 100 and 200, 400. 100, 200, in this case, this shows maximum here, here, but 400 DSM-5 uh, only <coughs> uh, decreased the conversion. This is shows some without <coughs> alkali arthralantonite on gamma alumina. Magnesium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. <coughs> they, they have some maximum around here, more ratio, at more ratio. Magnesium 1.67, <coughs> calcium 1.0, strontium 1.0, barium 0 0.3, and total conversion is uh, 60 to 80. And effective conversion is around 30 to 35 here. And lanthanide and even the dynamic carbonate also has <coughs> have some effect on physiotropic synthesis. And <coughs> so alkaline earth uh, so lanthanide complexes can be uh, combined with the halide. Uh, effective catalyst. This seed shows some result. Combination sanction metal acetyl astonate on gamma alumina. Erosion. Erosion to estimate so some <coughs> effect on product distributions ethanol and acetic acid is formed though the methane is a major product in this case and lodium iron more ratio uh, 0 0.3 then ethanol and acetic acid almost disappear. Only around here, more ratio around here is effective for, for C2 oxygenated <coughs> compound, ethanol and acetic acid. Rhodium, acetic acetate, and then rhodium ion ratio around 1 point, 0 0.1. So 
self. <coughs> and on here is, we can see it uh, here maximum. And relation increased, and then eternal formation is rapidly decreased. This is final seed. <coughs> so it's the ammonium by nuclear iron carbon phthalate. Uh, carbonium phthalate is excellent catalyst precursor for physical synthesis. And the activity of phthalate on support is dramatically enhanced by combination of alkali metal hydroxide, alkali earth metal hydroxide. For catalyst. Uh, variety of alkali and alkali as metal hydroxide can be used as a co catalyst. None of them, potassium hydroxide is the best. A conversion of a monoxide can be achieved together with high effective conversion to hydrocarbons and high selectivity polymers. The catalytic activity is slight. We depend on such support of zero light and outcome alone. Thank you, Atesh. Okay. Yes, Professor Sapo. When you have potassium hydroxide in contact with uh, an acidic zeolite such as HY or HCSM5, uh, I would expect ion exchange to be rather efficient so that the uh, potassium goes inside and uh, Proteins is here as water. Uh, could you give us the ratio of the potassium to the proton uh, uh, ratio at the uh, maximum? Yeah, I could not explain this fact exactly, but uh, uh, metal hydroxide is consumed partly uh, with uh, pellet, and another one is support. So <coughs> Give us the potassium iron ratio, but what is the potassium proton ratio in the uh, HY or HCSM5 supported catalyst? Yeah. <coughs> this proton is acidic. And this is it's a weak base. So alkali metal hydroxide is a strong base. So this is some alkali metal hydroxide can react with phthalate at this point and this proton. And alkali metal hydroxide also react with support. Acidic, acidic side. So, uh, <coughs> so potassium ion ratio is uh, not mean the potassium hydroxide react with phthalate. It's only the fact that this system, potassium hydroxide, consumed and total amount of potassium hydroxide. And then, so <coughs> this means uh, overall ratio does not mean that potassium hydroxide react with uh, phthalate. Does it exchange with protons? Yeah, that's, I think so, yeah. yeah. Do you know if there's any acidity left in the, in the uh, supported catalyst? <coughs> uh, do you know whether there's any acidity left on the supported catalyst? Oh. <coughs> I did not examine the, the acidity. 
that's it, activation before the reaction. Activation is severe condition. Then <coughs> this is this part is disappeared. Yes. May I ask, as well, I continue with this question, you mentioned in your summary that the zeolites are only here in your catalyst preparation as a support. The, the active matter also, it's not inside the cavities of the zeolite. They're only the particles, <coughs> and they are mixed together, the zeolite particles mixed together with the Fischer-Tropsch catalyst. Or are the fissure drop sites within? Oh, the inside? Zero. You mean the inside? Oh, that's my question. Oh, I don't know that. Uh, you think uh, I, I understand your uh, results as well? Uh, uh, that the zeolites are only a support in your system. Uh, and just some stones, wool, wool, as well as lying around there, uh, uh, creating a porosity or structure, what it might be, could be. Uh, uh, Is this your understanding? Uh, yeah. Uh, because some other people try to introduce the fissure drop sites into the cav cavities né? and then see how the, the product uh, uh, composition might change or so and not uh, no longer getting a, a flowy distribution or so. Yes. Uh -huh. But in your case, it's yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know you have a question. Uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. I could not examine your yeah. program. Yeah. This is five. We use a diesel five, and then we expect some result. Yeah. It's probably low. Wait, what? That is a diesel five. It's a very ah. narrow one. Ah. Ah. Fisher drop size normally will not ah. have any space, sufficient ah. space, and the ah. product cannot ah. escape from the SM five. So I would imagine these are just particles ah. some um, within the mixture. Ah. Question. Yeah. Uh, noticed in some of your results with uh, zeolite supported catalyst that total CO conversion is uh, higher than two times the effective yeah. conversion. Yeah. Yeah. So you have some uh, a CO2 formation which is not due to water gas shift reaction. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, so do you have any any speculation? Yeah. Is that CO disproportionation or, or anything else? And how that affects uh, the activation of your cap? Yeah. Around here, just two times. Right. And uh, here more than two. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So where, where that CO2 yeah. comes from? Yeah, I think one reason is that this, this proponation on carbon monoxide, carbon and carbon dioxide. So uh, this means <coughs> catalyst to deactivated carbon deposit. I think, uh, but I couldn't uh, have that evidence for this reaction. Okay, thank you. <coughs> yes. It's a very interesting work. I wonder whether you have, if, if have, have any curve about a product distribution with DRI mm -hmm. and with ammonium, comma, and uh, that's kind of question and uh, any kind of shape to it could be in your case. Yeah, we have, have some evidence that shape selectivity is effective for this reaction. <coughs> the GSM5, mm -hmm. when you use the GSM5 as support, as support then C10 hydrocarbon is reduced when it's fine and used. So, is that because you have a different uh, acidity and different support that you're using? That you see this change, let's say, in the CLI and the silica aluminum, the acidity is different? Yeah. Yeah.
when we use the hydro H by zeolite, and then this sodium by zeolite, and then maxima different <coughs> positions. This means the amount of potassium hydroxide is, I think, H by zeolite is changed K by zeolite. Sodium white, sodium white zeolite is, in this case, potassium hydroxide, this amount is added to this system. So, potassium HY zeolite is used, HY zeolite is partly converted with KY zeolite in this case. So acidity, I don't, um, I don't ex examine this system. Acidity is important or not. Yes, yes. that's that <coughs> Since you do have the C4, C5, and C6, uh, one could perhaps judge the role of the acidity if you analyze the isonormal ratio. In a classical fissure torture, you have only normal hydrocarbons, but uh, when you, the acid <coughs> function is still alive, we would expect the, uh, for these conditions, isomerization. Ah. So did you analyze the isonormal ratio of your higher hydrocarbons? I think uh, this is normal. They are only normal? Only normal. So that there is no acid uh, catalysis involved? I think. Thank you. And one last question. You showed a, a, a figure in which you suggest that the amount of potassium needed to get this maximum activity is lower as you decrease the number of aluminums in your zeolite, the ZSM5 slide. So it appears that the main role of potassium is to eliminate acid sites that apparently have some undesirable effect. Not that one. You had ZSM5 with different aluminum content, right? <coughs> that you need is moving to the left as you decrease the number of aluminums in the system, right? Yeah. Here. Right, and then eventually you see none at all. Uh -huh. So it, it, is that in parentheses, is that the silica to alumina ratio, I presume, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if you have almost no acidity, you need almost no potassium in order to get this to be an active catalyst. And that suggests that by putting it into an acid substrate, you have damaged the catalyst, and this potassium is letting you undo some of that damage that you have caused. Right? Thank you. Well, let's thank the speaker for his presentation.